Okay, I know you're hungry. If you can hold on just a little bit, hopefully I can take your mind off food. I am not a type designer. I am not going to be talking about type design. Just want to let you know that. I'm a typographer. We're going to talk about typography. So, the world is shifting, and so is the world of typography and graphic design. However, the design education process is actually not making these changes. I think that type education has to be reformed to truly prepare you in this audience for the world. The designers need to look at the global society with a new perspective because the fixed base knowledge is stifling you. Type Camp was created as a new approach to learning design and typography. It is not a substitution, it is a fine tuning for your type education. This, hang on, this talk focuses on Type Camp as an example. It is a case study. So, let me first talk about type education. I get this question a lot. What book do I read so typography makes sense? What do I answer? All of them. It's true, I answer all of them. You do, you have to read a lot, you have to understand a lot. So there's no one book that's gonna answer you. This is a good one though, and I have to say I'm biased. This is Jan Mendorf, he is a friend of mine, but this is the best type textbook I have seen yet. I really like this, it deals with a lot of complex issues, and it deals with multilingual issues. There is no set of rules that will help you solve all your typesetting problems. You want one, ain't gonna happen. Anytime you see those top 10 lists of what you need to do to have better typography, don't pay attention to them because you can't just boil it down to 10 issues. There's no perfect combination of typefaces. I get this question all the time. Which typefaces do I combine? Well, you know what? There's lots of possibilities. There's no one answer. There's no one typeface that you can use for everything, although I think meta is very close, but there's lots of possibilities. So how can I help people understand more about typography if it's hard, if it's complex? What I do is I help people to see type differently so that you can work with type differently. For the way I see it, type education is pretty much the same as it was 20 or even 50 years ago. A lot of teachers are teaching the way they learned, not uh, the way they were taught, not the way that they learned. So to me, a lot of what's gonna be asked of you guys is entirely different than what was asked by me. You already know basic type. You already have digital design tools. Hopefully you're comfortable with InDesign and maybe even FontLab. And you're already comfortable with a lot of communication techniques. You are not better, you are not worse. You're just different than what it's been in the past. So I believe that if you want people to be innovative, you need to have innovative teaching. And then your learning will be innovative. So, What's an example of innovative typography? Here's two of my favorites. Restraint. This is a typeface by Marion Banshees. If you have not heard of Marion Banshees, write that name down, go to banshees.com and see that work. It's pretty amazing. So this typeface was developed about eight years ago and it works horizontally and vertically. Marion does a lot of um, illustration and patterns so you can have things work almost like Scrabble tiles. And then you can add on bits. And you can even do crazy things with color. Pretty cool. Letter Error Twin is my all-time favorite typeface. This is over 10 years old, probably about 12 years old now. It was developed for Minneapolis, St. Paul, two cities in the United States that are called the Twin Cities. I'll show you why it's cool. So these two guys at Letter Air, they did a lot of sketches. They sat there and drew and drew and drew, and they ended up with quite a variety of letters. Some were structured, some had chunky serifs, some were round, some were extra loopy. So they were trying to figure out what to do with it. What they came up with were letter forms that weren't necessarily on an X and Y axis. They came up with letters what if they were a little bit of this, and a little bit of this, and a little bit of this? So they hooked it up to the weather. That means that 
if the temperature is cold, this, it's a little bit more one way. If it's really windy, it's a little bit more another way. This, the, these cities have very extreme weather, so the result is you can see what weather was happening when they typeset the piece. Cold, structured, blocky serifs, warm, extra loops, and plain weird when it's windy on the weather. So how can we come up with more innovative projects like this? Remember, both of those are about 10 years old. I believe that the best learning comes from being comfortable. I don't want you to worry about grades. I don't want you to worry about comparing yourself to other people. And I want you to try new things without being scared. So I create projects that are unpredictable. I don't want you to try to figure it out in the very beginning. I want it to be complex and layered so every stage you learn something different. I believe that the projects need to be interesting. Boring projects create boring work. And when I was in school, I did a lot of boring projects and yes, I was bored. <laughs> so, I really think that it's a problem if you're aiming for perfection. Now, I think you gotta screw up quite a lot to learn something. So I actually make sure that the projects will make you screw up. You're gonna learn a lot more. A priority is learning from each other. Every class I've ever taught, I tell everybody, you're gonna learn more from everybody in this room than you will from me. They never believe me, and by the end, they know I was right. <coughs> Collaboration is incredibly important. People are exponential. Your ideas are exponential. They will be so much better if you share them with somebody else. A big fear is that, what if they steal it? Well, you know what? Let them steal it. You can come up with a better one, right? Let it go. If you're passionate about what you're doing, that will be contagious. I definitely make sure that people know that the energy they create is more important than the information. So, and with all of this put together, I propose that we actually teach culture within typography. This is not multicultural typography. <laughs> Neither is this. This is not multicultural typography. Nor is this. Or this. You know you've seen restaurants and that Chinese stuff. You know you have. It's all stupid. That's not multicultural. I mean, I'm really faux Hebrew, come on. So, for you in this audience to understand Typography, you need to understand the culture to which you're communicating. This is why we started India Type Camp. We had our first camp in 2009, five years ago, and we just had another one last week. Some of the participants are in this audience. We participated in lots of aspects of Indian culture, but we tried to make sure that they understood what they were doing and why it was important. And yes, we drank water out of coconuts. How cool is that? To you, it might not be a big deal. To us, it was cool. We saw cows, totally cool. So yes, we were tourists in a lot of ways. But we made sure that we looked at the coconut seller and we saw the goats that he fed the coconuts to, understood the cycle of things. Why is the cow important? We understood it. We talked about it. We discussed it. We ate only regional food and in the regional way. We looked at local markets. We participated in the culture. Yes, there's type in it too. Now, I've actually updated my slides with some things that happened last week. The top left image of the Coca-Cola sign, that was taken five years ago, and that was the first time any of us had seen a Tamil, like italic, scripty, gestural thing. And now it's all over. I, I actually just stopped taking pictures of it in Chennai last week because there were so many. So even in five years, I've watched lettering and type change. And now there's a lot more um, kind of not really experimental, but more expression in the Tamil. We take pictures of everything, graffiti, signage, you name it. It's, it's a joy to be around people that are taking pictures of the same things you're taking pictures of, I have to say. <laughs> we do columns. Everybody has a glyph that they work with, and then they create a column that works with that particular glyph. It ain't easy at all. 
and a lot of students struggle with it, but it's a very rewarding project. The pictures on the left are from 2005, I mean 2009, the ones on the right are from last week. One of the cool things about the column project is that local women see what we're doing and come and join in, and that's awesome. So the woman at the top in the yellow sari, she was just a neighbor, walked by and just came, got some flour and just started doing it. The women in the larger images, they're from last week. And what's, I love that they're proud of what they do and they wanna show that, I think that's awesome. The problem is that they started getting really competitive. And so they would be like egging each other on and you could see them going, eh, yeah, you know, I can do better. And so we had like a street filled with columns and we had to tell them to leave because we had this crowd of women and they're all like getting competitive. So we actually had to tell them to thank you, but please leave. So anyway, um, we discussed lots of different aspects of the multicultural um, scene in India. These are images from the Musalman, which is an Urdu newspaper, handwritten every day and uh, sent out to 21,000 different people all over India. It is the oldest newspaper in India. It is the oldest Urdu newspaper in the world. It's been going on for like 120 years or something like that, handwritten every day. Now, this tells you a lot about the idea of community. Does this matter? Yes. This came up in the research discussion yesterday. Absolutely it matters. It's preserving this wonderful script. And they think it matters enough to produce it and go through all the effort. If you're ever in Chennai, I highly recommend visiting it. All the in, um, participants learn Tamil, well, it's learn how to write Tamil, because they all get primers. They all get children's primers. So these are adults working with primers with cartoons and stuff in it but they learn how to make the form. It's not just about looking at it, it's about understanding how it works. It starts lots of discussions. There are type designers, experienced type designers that attend type camp, as well as beginners, and all of these people are working together to look at things in a new way. They practice and practice and practice. They try it as a didone, they try it humanist, they try it monoline. We invite sign painters, local sign painters, and have them teach us. They show us different aspects of the letter forms. What are different approaches you can take? What are different forms you can make? And they basically have a whole bunch of people worshiping everything they do. Here's some examples of last, of last week. We asked them to, do, to show three different examples. A lot of personality starts showing um, up. Look at how he was um, overlapping the loops on the last glyph, and look at how the first glyph definitely changes depending on each style. This helps the participants understand that you can still do some modifications to make sure, and make sure it's still readable. We talk to them, we ask them questions. The guy on the left's about to get married, so one of the signs in Latin was marriage. We're all excited about it. Um, but we, we ask them to show us different styles, and that actually helps us loosen up with what we think is possible. These are images from five years ago where we all silk screened posters to give back to the city of Chennai. These are an Indian theme. These were a Tamil concept with a Tamil design to a Tamil audience. We spent all week understanding what that meant. You can't just say, hey, it's Indian and make it be Indian colors. That's what we're definitely trying to discourage. We want to make sure that it's an Indian problem with an Indian solution, not an outsider solution. This was Kristen's poster on this and that, the idea that things can be this and that and not this or that. Big thing for us to figure out. Oh, that's um, the top left image is of the Tata Books silk screening studio, the old one with the fast roof. This is Lisa's poster. She felt that there was always a rhythm to the city, specifically at night, so she tried to get a bit of a rhythm with her silk screen letters. All of these are handwritten. On the left is Jess, and she was very confused about the head bobble, whether it meant yes or no. So this is her version, her reaction to it. Um, everything had to be bilingual. It has to have Tamil and English. The one on the right is Todd McBee's. His deals with how the dot, the putu, is everywhere. Top left is Sridhar. He was our only Indian participant five years ago. He was an employee at um, Adobe. He has a background in architecture, as you can tell by his amazing lettering and drawing. 
Bottom right is Paul Hunt, who gave a talk yesterday at Malayalam. There is no English on here, but it was such a nice poster, we forgave him for it. This year, we took a different approach. We felt that we wanted to give back in a more, more, I don't know, kind of useful way. So we encouraged the students to walk around the local market, see different signs, see different stalls that did not have signs, ask the stall owners what they wanted to sign, if they wanted to sign and what they wanted it to be like, and then the students designed them themselves. There was TV repair, puja materials, fish. All of these are their own ideas, their own solutions, their own Tamil drawings. Here's some of the images when they were drying. So we had a variety from a flour mill to a fruit stand to a fancy store to fish. And then we gave them back to the stall owners. And it was a very fun experience. Um, some of them kind of didn't know what to do. The guy with the flour mill looks very stunned, probably because we were all taking pictures of him. But when we walked back by, the this, sign this was in pride of place. The fancy store woman was uh, one of my favorites. She was really, really pleased. And she came up with a name. That's what she wanted to have. So with Tight Camp, we build community. We really believe in learning from each other. We absolutely want to encourage sharing information, sharing our knowledge, and we want to bypass cultural stereotypes so we can be better designers. Thank you.